It's dark stuff. So we're recording now? Yes. OK. So this is the September interim of the WebRTC Working Group. Just a reminder about the IPR policy. We abide by the W3C patent policy, which is described at the link. And only people and companies listed at another link are allowed to make substantive contributions. So today we're going to cover conditional focus, get viewport media, display service constraints, and echo cancellation. Um, a little bit about upcoming meetings. Uh, we had some overflow from today's meeting, and so we're going to schedule an October virtual interim. We put out a doodle poll for the week of either October 4th or 11th. We're going to try to close that poll pretty quickly because it's possible that the meeting would be the next week. So please uh, go and stick your entries in right away. Uh, we're going to close that poll September 28th. We also made available the overflow slides. So we have our, almost a full agenda for the October meeting already. Um, and those are available at the, at the link. And I've also uh, posted it um, to the working group mailing list. As far as TPAC goes, the TPAC meeting schedule has been posted. And we have two meetings on the agenda for TPAC. One on October 26th, a joint meeting with the media working group for two hours. Um, and I'm going to post a request for agenda items for that. Uh, and then we have a Weber to see working group meeting of only one hour uh, on the 29th of October. Um, so we'll be posting an agenda request for that one as well. And all of the details, as usual, will be on the Weber to see uh, wiki main page. Uh, once we get all these things scheduled, or the conference parameters and, and all that stuff. Okay. Um, so about this meeting, uh, the slides have been, uh, uh, link to the slides is on the wiki. Um, we do need to get a scribe. We have a volunteer for that. Anyone volunteering to take notes? And, and describe. Uh, I'll do it, Bernard. Okay, thank you, Doc. All right. So a little bit about document status. Uh, many people know this, uh, but uh, hosting within a W3C doesn't imply that the document's been adopted by a working group. That requires a call for adoption. Uh, editor's drafts don't represent working group consensus. Working group drafts do uh, once they're confirmed by a CFC. It's also possible to merge PRs that may lack consensus if a note is attached, indicating controversy. It's also possible to run CFCs on issues, PRs, or sections of a document. We'll be talking about some of those open ones uh, in a moment. Also about the W3C code of conduct, we operate under that code of conduct, and the link is here. Uh, of course, we're all passionate about improving what we see, but let's try to keep it cordial and professional if we can. A little bit about this virtual meeting. It is being recorded. Um, to get in the Google Meet chat, uh, to, to get in the queue, please type plus Q um, and minus Q, and then we'll, we'll call on you and, and maintain a speaker queue. Um, please also use headphones or an echo canceling speakerphone. Um, and wait for microphone access uh, to be granted before speaking and you know state your full name, et cetera. I, I don't think we'll be doing any polls uh, to, at today's meeting, but um, we could do it if we need a sense of the room. Don't think we, we will. Okay, so we've got um, two recent CFCs, uh, one on republishing of media capture and streams at CR. Um, I, we hadn't had, uh, the last CR was well over a year ago, I think almost 18 months, so it's time certainly to republish at CR. Uh, that completed on September 17th. I think we have five positive responses uh, so far, and I think, Yanni, you'll write up the summary, right? I'm not sure there's much to summarize other than going ahead, but. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the, set, the one that's ongoing now is a CFC on transferable media stream tracks. Uh, that's a section that's been been added to the um, media capture extensions. Two responses so far. That will complete on September 27, 2021. Uh, we really would like to have people read this. 
Um, in particular, I think the October meeting will go into a lot of detail about some of the reasons why, why this is desirable, potentially. Um, so please uh, read that section, uh, you know, play around with it, um, and, and comment on the CFC. All right. Uh, so as people know, uh, a lot of what we've been talking about in some of the specs like Media Capture Transform, as well as in other groups, um, such as Web Transport, relies on the WD streams. Uh, specification. Um, and there are actually quite a few issues in that spec. Um, I just noticed some of them here. Um, and they do relate to some of the pipelines we've been talking about setting up. And I think in the October meeting in particular, we will get into a lot of these and their impact. Um, and so I just wanted to point out that these discussions are ongoing in the What WG uh, Streams repo itself. Um, so people should read these things in preparation for the October meeting and comment on them or uh, at least read read uh, all of the discussion um, going on there uh, as as preparation. And, and some of this does relate to potentially to the transformer media stream tracks as well. Okay, so here's uh, what we're going to do for the agenda for today. Uh, we basically have, I guess, a lot with three topics, conditional focus, get viewport media, and display service constraints. Uh, and then we have Harold on um, echo cancellation, and then um, 20 minutes for wrap up and next steps. Uh, we'll try to keep to the time. Um, so we'll give you a warning about two minutes before your time is up, and then uh, move on to the next item. So a lot. Yes, may I start? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, so I've got a little riddle, but uh, you can see the answer pretty quickly, and I guess that you can uh, guess. And the question is, we've got two scenarios here, a video conferencing uh, application, uh, and one scenario we're capturing a thesis draft, and the other uh, one we're capturing a presentation. And the question is, what's in common for both of these? And the answer is a lot of things, but one of the things that should not be in common and is in common is that when you start capturing from the video conference, if you start capturing the thesis draft, you immediately switch focus to that, or uh, the browser focuses that document. And when you capture the presentation, it does the same, but sometimes it could make a bit less sense because maybe you can actually control that presentation directly from your video conference in application. You can say next slide, previous slide, and there's not a lot more that you want to, might want to do. There is some. Uh, but a, lo uh, a lot of your interaction is going to be just that. And then to focus that application, and then to force the user to find their way back while they're talking to an esteemed audience such as yourself, which puts the speaker a bit under uh, mental pressure, not exactly the best experience for them. So next slide, please. Uh, and these slides are just for those people who are going to read those uh, later, but we can see that here, as I said, you would be immediately uh, capturing, and that makes sense, I think, because if you are capturing a text editor, well, it's relatively likely that you're going to edit some text, and maybe you don't need to see the faces of the other people, although maybe it would be nice, and you really need to start getting access to the text. Next slide, please. Whereas if you're uh, capturing an, uh, a presentation, you want to control it remotely, and I've got a demo, and, uh, and you can try the link. So long as you try with a, a sufficiently modern version of Chrome, you will be able to see uh, how it works. Next slide, please. So uh, the question is, okay, so sometimes we capture an application that we want to immediately focus, and sometimes not. And how do we know? Or, so the browser doesn't know. The browser is agnostic. It, all it says is some JavaScript. It has no idea what kind of application is running in the capturing uh, tab. It has no idea what's in the captured application, uh, in the captured tab or window. And you know, it can, maybe it could employ a couple of heuristics, but generally it's not likely that it would be able to do a very good job. Um, but the capturing application, well, it knows everything there is to know about itself. And sometimes it might even know something about the captured application. So for one thing, uh, the capturing application could know that, hey, users, my users usually do this or usually do that. Or maybe it could even, you know, if we're using capture handle, which is an unspecified proposal I've made, 
but hopefully uh, I could convince uh, the working group that it's worthwhile, um, then it would know exactly what it caught under uh, sometimes. Sometimes it would have no idea, but sometimes it would know, hey, I caught Google Slides or I caught some other application, maybe Wikipedia. And in those cases, well, the, the decision of whether to switch focus is very informed. Next slide, please. So uh, we will notice that because the user could choose more than one thing, it is not really possible to create it. It is less useful to create an API that allows you to decide ahead of time whether you want to uh, focus the captured application or not. If you can make the, the decision immediately after capture starts, then you encompass, you get everything that you would have gotten if you made the decision ahead of time, because you could still hard code the decision of always focus or never focus. But now you also get the, uh, the opportunity to examine what you got and make a decision based on that. Um, so I am proposing um, an API that generally just says, hey, as soon as you uh, as the capture starts, you get uh, your promise resolved. The promise that get display media uh, returned, it is resolved. It is resolved on a micro task. And so long as that micro task is not terminated, you have an opportunity to call focus. You say, you want to focus or not? After that, it's too late. You no longer do that. Now, in the next slide, which I please do not uh, switch, in the next slide are uh, notes and uh, care covering some edge cases. So, for example, okay, but what if the micro task on which you resolved runs for five minutes? Well, you don't want to uh, allow that. So, or uh, what if the application does not call the focus uh, function at all? You probably want to behave the way you did before. But assuming that those edge cases are not encountered, you just call focus, you say, hey, focus or don't. Um, and then you can make the decision based on all of the things that we have discussed before. You could hard code the decision based on the fact that you're a capturing application of a certain type. You could say, hey, if it's a window, focus that. If it's a, it's a it's tab, don't, vice versa. Or you could even use capture handle and try to see exactly what you capture captured. Uh, the only thing that you cannot do here is you cannot really wait for the first frame, try to read that, make a decision based on that. Like that is one thing that maybe would have been even nicer. But unfortunately, uh, my, the API I'm proposing does not allow you to do that just yet. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here we have a discussion that I will not walk you through this wall of text, which of course you're welcome to read later if the proposal is of interest to you. But basically, get a micro task. If you, uh, before the micro task uh, even fires, you don't have a handle to the track. You cannot do anything. While you're on the micro task, that's your time to shine. You call the, uh, the API, things happen. After that, you just get an exception raised. Uh, if you don't call, you just uh, nothing happens. It's the same uh, behavior that happened before. Or rather, basically, we just say the uh, user agent makes its own decision. Uh, Chrome intends to keep on doing what it did before. Um, Yanivar, is the now, uh, do you specifically want to ask now, or should I just finish this particular slide? Oh, no, go ahead. I was just uh, getting okay. my cue in. Cool. Uh, so, uh, mm, 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 mm. yes, and one thing that we do, for example, to prevent like an attack of late focus, where you maybe you put a, uh, a button on the page for the user, you hold up the micro task, and as the user is just getting ready to click that, you focus, uh, switch focus. Uh, so all sorts of attacks like that, the way we prevent them and we say, hey, you've got exactly one second to do that. One second, it could sometimes CPU could be starved and you might end up not making it, in which case, shame, uh, you're going to get a, no exception. You'll just not get the change in behavior. But one second is a lot of time uh, for a computer. And most of the time, this is going to be enough. And for the user, it's not terribly disruptive. Um, so uh, and of course the usual stuff you cannot focus more than once and you know to prevent um, uh, if you clone the track that you know so that you don't get competing uh, calls we just ignore anything that's on a clone it's just an error uh, yes I will uh, listen to the queue now okay so you are you done with all the slides a lot there's still some more I've got one more slide I um, okay. Uh, okay I can do that one I think it's not terribly long Okay. Uh, so next slide, please. So the last slide is uh, in the um, particular API that I'm proposing. I'm proposing exposing this new method on a subclass of media stream track so that only 
uh, if you capture a tab or a window, would this even be uh, observable in this particular method? Uh, and I just want to mention that this does, uh, this does not really limit us in the future. So here is an inheritance tree that we could eventually go to, which is, you know, right now we only have the blue ones. I'm offering, uh, suggesting that we add the red one, but at the end, we will be able to break everything apart really fine so that you've got one class for tab, for window, for screen, for anything that's not even a display capture. And we just group together tab and window under, under one common ancestor that we call focusable media stream track. And we only expose focus on that. Uh, that was the last slide on this topic. And uh, I think Yanivar was first. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I think you're good. Uh, yeah, so um, I uh, thank you for the slides. I think this is a reasonable problem to solve uh, because browsers today have implemented specific behavior that's narrowly focused to the presenting use case. So uh, I do have some concerns with the API surface, uh, but I, I do think uh, the problem is worth solving. Um, specific to the API, since uh, focus switching would be global to the user, I don't feel there's a need to put this API on track at all, which would uh, remove the need to subclass track. We could have uh, a navigator media devices, you know, focus method that you could invoke. Uh, so I don't see that we need to, uh, it's not like you're going to call get display media twice and have two tracks. So uh, that, that uh, precision to target the track doesn't seem necessary. So I'm hoping that is solvable. Uh, the other one is that I think microtask is too narrow. I appreciate the, the security measures there, and I like the one second busy timeout. But uh, uh, putting it at the microtask level would prevent shimming. So I would recommend uh, queuing a task as well. Uh, sorry, queuing a task instead, and I think that would give you the same protection. Um, also, I had a question. If you, if you can't look at a frame, how would the app know whether to focus or not based on the target? Uh, yes, so I'll do it in a reverse order. Uh, so the app will know because it can still call get settings and get settings allows you to, to say, okay, was it a window? Was it a tab? Uh, was it a screen? And also with capture handle, you might sometimes be able to say more. Uh, so that's how. Um, a frame would also not be, although that is like, I wouldn't say that's the holy grail, but it's definitely very useful. Um, it's not so easy to, to look at the frame and tell exactly what it is, right? It's very easy to make a mistake. Applications could be just moving through something. If I capture, for example, YouTube, well, okay, most of the tab, most of the frame I'm capturing is a video, you know, could be a little bit difficult to parse. So this is more like uh, plans for the future, um, but for the immediate uh, future, it is a lot easier to just look at the metadata. Um, the other question was, uh, could you remind me, it was around queuing a um, uh, microtask, if I'm not mistaken? Task instead of microtask, and uh, the last one was uh, uh, putting the API on the global instead of a track. Uh, so on the global, I've not considered, so maybe I'm, I'm willing to listen, uh, probably not live like that. I need some time to process. Um, the immediate thing I see about this is that it's not so easy to distinguish clones from non-clones and you could, um, but I don't know if these are reasonable concerns. We might end up agreeing to do that just that. So let me think. Um, for microtask, in fact, our implementation in Chrome uh, behind the flag at the moment uh, uses microtask that we schedule immediately after get display media. Uh, if you're open to specifying it like that, then we can talk. Um, one problem I can see here is that you could keep on. Um, so uh, when I say microtask, I do not actually uh, specify. I don't remember if no, I don't know. Yes, I do specify it in the spec. So never mind. Um, I think that one benefit here is that it explains to the web developers immediately of like, hey, you just capture this and you immediately call focus. Uh, I am not. Oh. Um, why would shimming be an important use case, if you could explain? Uh, well, we generally try to make APIs shimmable in the web platform. I mean, Adapter.js is a good example. So any kind of shim that uh, shims an async method might need to call the original method. And that means uh, implicitly that you have to uh, queue another microtask in order to do that. 
And I don't see that the requirement, uh, the security properties you want here uh, also seem met by queuing a task, I think. So I'm not sure uh, why a micro task was chosen. Uh, yes, no. Uh, so if we uh, if we don't have a clear boundary of like, now it's done, and even if you have not called focus, this is going to happen, it means that all existing applications that do not call focus will experience a one second delay or the focus change. But if you queue a mic, if you say, yes, no, no, I'm not saying we should wait a, a second. My understanding of the one second delay was only for malicious busy waiting applications, correct? Because mm -hmm. yes. uh, uh, you're only waiting uh, a micro task, which is really fast. So I think queuing a task waits a task instead of a micro task, and it's also a negligible difference in time. So I think they're both good. Um, uh, possibly, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. We'd have to think about this. Um, yes? Sure. I, 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 I think we can keep discussing that. Um, but my main concern is where the API lives right now. I don't think we want it on a track. OK. Uh, one thing to, to think about, just to say it so everybody can think about it, is that I think that um, we, if you uh, queue a task, I think it's a bit more likely that it would exceed the one second, and even though, um, yeah, but if it does exceed the, uh, the one second, then it would switch focus anyway. Uh, we can talk about this. It is an interesting proposal. Thank you. Okay, uh, UN. Uh, yeah, so on the same topic, I would say uh, cloning of tracks is uh, known. And when you subtype tracks, then it starts to be a bit messy because if you clone a track, will it be the base type or will it be the uh, derived type and so on? So if we can avoid to subtype uh, track, like it seems possible to do, we should try to, to do that. That will be simpler. Um, I was a bit surprised. Uh, so that's the first, first uh, comment. The second comment, I was a bit uh, misled with the one second issue. I was thinking that somehow you were saying micro task, but then uh, we would wait for somehow one second. And uh, I think that uh, given we want the default behavior, which is uh, the user agent to do focus uh, by default, we really want that to happen very fast. And now we have some JavaScript that is executed in between uh, this thing. And that's why uh, I would hope we can uh, keep that very short uh, so that it's, uh, it's done uh, very quickly. So, the micro task, like you're doing await gate display media and then synchronously you, you do the focus, that seems fine by me, which seems to be what you're uh, going uh, with, Elad. So I, I, I think it's fine to me. Uh, and the additional condition that, yeah, if you're busy looping, then maybe there will be additional uh, uh, mitigations by the browser. That seems good as well. Yes, uh, I just want to clarify that I'm not suggesting either one second or at the end of the current micro task, but rather both. So uh, an application that does not hold up the, the main thread for too long is just going to experience that the first micro task, uh, the micro task on which get display, uh, <clears throat> the micro task on which the get display media promise was resolved. Sorry, it's a bit of a mouthful. So this one, as soon as it uh, terminates, focus happens, even if it is not called focus, right? Just the decision is made. Oh, okay. But as a backup, in case it was faulty or there was a CPU hack or it's even malicious, there is the one second uh, backup, but you normally don't uh, hit that. Mm. So I, I, I like the, the first one. Uh, I would need to think more about this one second where you can, you can call focus uh, and it would, it would still succeed. Uh, I'm not sure I like it, uh, but at least the basic proposal without one second, I'm, I think I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, uh, Harold? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. no, to the cloning issue, I think we have one case of uh, media stream track subclass and uh, a clone that produces the base class. I think that was a mistake and we should change it. Uh, when we add new features like this, to a media stream track. We basically have two alternatives, either with subclass or we add the function in the base class and just specify that it fails whenever the track is not the right type. I mean, subclass seems somehow tidier, but uh, most of the time, like 
99.9% of the time, my guess. Uh, JavaScript programmers don't care about the class of the object. They just care, care about its method. So I don't think it matters much what we choose, but uh, we should we should uh, we should pick one. Um, if I could say something else to uh, support this view, I think that as we go forward, we're going to add a few more APIs, uh, and some of them are going to be specific to specific uh, types. So it would make sense if the uh, inheritance tree actually matches those types and allows us to expose things only where they belong and not have to mess up the implementation with too many exceptions that are returned from methods that are just irrelevant. But, but I, I believe that uh, to do that, we, we would need to get like uh, an important set of APIs where we are sure we're actually wanting to uh, do subclass and it's uh, inferior to uh, to do the uh, non-subclassing, and then we could try to uh, clone to change clones so that clone would be uh, the subtype and so on. Uh, but if, if we if we have only one motivation, uh, and it's just one one method, uh, I think that I would uh, uh, I propose to not go there. So it seems there are multiple APIs, so we should look at them and then decide specifically on whether we want clone uh, to change or not. Uh, okay. Yeah, has to be first. Uh, that's that's true, and also just to uh, I'll give you three uh, right uh, away. So capture handle, conditional focus, and region capture. Uh, all of them do not apply to uh, capturing an entire screen or to capturing a media tra uh, stream track that's resulting from a get user media call. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, oh, OK. We can continue the discussion uh, later, I guess. Uh, Yanivar, you're in the queue. Yeah, I just want to clarify that I'd be opposed to this API if it relies on subclassing track. So I would really uh, hear an explanation first for why we cannot move it to a global. And the other uh, APIs you mentioned are not on the agenda today. So I think we can skip the subclassing question. So uh, Yanivar, will you be we, will you be describing the effects of uh, of of uh, moving it to this API to a global somewhere? Um, well, you could do a, a me navigator media devices dot focus, and uh, if you want more feedback, I, I'll, I'll happy to work. I'm happy to work well, with I mean, uh, uh, I mean, will, will you will you write this up in a in a in an issue of pull requests or some yeah. some place where we can continue the discussion? Well, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit confused why this is better. So I'd like to see their argument written up. Of course. OK. I'm done. Are we done with discussion on this topic? Um, would it be appropriate to say that Mozilla and Apple voiced uh, interest in this API and are interested in getting the correct shape? I think we're interested in solving this problem uh, with a different API shape, a slightly different API shape. Uh, thank you, Yaniver. Uh, Yuen, um, have I correctly summarized your um, position, or was I mistaken? Um, I'd like to explore uh, a different shape as well and see what's better. So that, that's something we, we should discuss. Uh, and I also would like to discuss this one second. But other than that, yeah, uh, working there seems seems fine in general, I guess. Sorry, clarifying question. The one second uh, is an additional requirement, right? So it would only kick in if uh, a JavaScript is busy waiting for one second. Correct. Well, cor almost um, correct. Uh, it is an additional requirement. That's 100% correct. That it would only kick in then is not correct because you could also get CPU delays. So it could be that the JavaScript application is 100% legitimate, tries to handle it as quickly as possible. CPU does not get scheduled, and it happens. I expect this to be a relatively um, uncommon edge case. Right, but it's a restriction, not an allowance. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so maybe I made it misunderstood the, the proposal then. So if it's a restriction and it's trying to mitigate the busy looking, busy looking of JS, uh, then I don't think I have any, uh, I think it's good. <laughs> Excellent.
Uh, Jennifer, thank you very much for the question. Then. Okay. Uh, anything else on this topic? Nope. Okay. Move on to get the report media. Yes, uh, so uh, here I'm presenting together with Fian Ivar, uh, if you would like. Uh, basically, we would like to give a recap. Uh, we've been uh, speaking a lot about Get the Viewport Media, and uh, we've got a couple of items of consensus uh, that we would like to, but consensus between us, of course, not with the working group, and we would like to uh, hear the working group's opinion. Uh, so far, we've been talking about have uh, gating get viewport media maybe i should give a quick uh, recap of what get viewport media is it's an api allowing you to capture the current tabs viewport so basically every all of the content that you see in the tab in which uh, get viewport media is called uh, if there is uh, occluding content it gets captured if there is occluded cap uh, content does not get captured it's basically the entire tab what you would get if you call get display media and uh, select the current tab so uh, this is a bit dangerous because you are capturing exactly what the application can influence the most. And because of that, um, we've agreed on a couple of um, items. One of them that the entire site has to be cross origin, uh, sorry, the tab has to be cross origin isolated, uh, that all of the documents on the tab, in the tab have to have an to express opt-in via header currently we're talking about using document policy but the concept is just that they need to opt in we can still talk about the mechanism and um an embedded iframe or an embedded document can only call this if it is been uh, if it has explicitly been given the permission to call it so top le level document can usually uh, call this and uh specifically called out privileged <laughs> iframes um so uh, the questions uh, to talk today are, A, uh, does anybody have any interesting opinions here? Um, second, uh, we have had some discussions about whether you actually capture the entire tab or just the uh, viewport of the iframe from which uh, the, uh, the API gets invoked. We agreed on having the entire tab. Uh, we being me and Yanivar, but everybody is welcome to have an opinion. And the last one is that we're tending towards using document policy as the opt-in mechanism. And we would like to hear thoughts here as well. Yanivar, have I said everything we wanted to cover? Uh, yes, thank you. I think that's good. And I think uh, the key part is that what's listed under proposed are the questions to the working group, right? And so uh, we've sort of, uh, what we're proposing together here is that Kit Viewport Media um, in order to have progress, uh, we'll capture the entire viewport, uh, not uh, part of the iframe. Uh, and we're wondering if the working group has any objections to that. And the second part is uh, we're hoping to bike shed on uh, using uh, document policy names. And the current contenders are required document policy viewport capture and document policy viewport capture. There are two because the first one is a requirement on uh, sub documents. Uh, any questions on the queue? Uh, is anybody in the queue? I don't see anybody. Anyone object to having get report media capture the entire report? So, Yaniva, can you say why would one object to this? What what are the con potential concerns? Well, uh, earlier proposals. Uh, if you were calling get viewport media from an iframe, the default was to only capture that iframe. Uh, but that's not, uh, but that's a little more complicated that because you're capturing the viewport of that iframe, which could theoretically include other content that occludes the iframe. So it's really a cropping tool. And uh, uh, cropping is important, but we felt that in order to make progress on get viewport media, we wanted to separate the cropping issue from get viewport media and this lets us do that so by default get viewport media would always give you the entire viewport and this lets us uh, discuss cropping in a separate issue okay so that's the gist of the decision uh, separating the cropping yeah. question thanks yes yeah. 
All right, um, I'm not hearing any objections. So can we record a rough agreement on capturing the entire viewport? It seems a logical step. Great. And the second is a bike shedding one. Uh, uh, we figured in order to uh, get some progress here, we could, uh, any objections to calling it viewport capture? Different names that have been thrown out are HTML capture and tab capture. But viewport capture seems to be the most precise. And we're also hoping to use the same name in the permissions policy. Any objections to? that so is it is the tradition for document policy to be a, to be a noun verb i am I, I believe so uh, sorry document policy i can't speak to but for permissions policy it used to be called features policy and you know there were names of features that's where that came from yeah so it's not so not noun verb has a tradition that's good Let's go with that. I mean, you, you could have had a cap capture viewport instead, but uh, just do what's traditional. Uh, Tim Patton is in the queue. Tim? Yeah, uh, just to say that those two are kind of connected. Like if the first, if we hadn't agreed to having the iframe capture the whole viewport, then the second one wouldn't make sense. Like, so if we go back on the first decision, we need to unwind this one as well. Uh, I'm sorry, if, um, I understand, if I understand correctly, what you're saying is that if we look at recap C, uh, we're saying that we're already delegating the permission to capture the entire tab to the iframe, and therefore it is not a problem that we are indeed capturing the entire iframe. No, no, right. it, it, uh, um, no, it's just semantics that you can't, if you're not, if the iframe isn't going to capture the whole viewport, then you shouldn't call the policy viewport capture because it's only capturing. The eye prime. So, like I, these two, these two things are, are correlated or linked or dependent or something. I, I could speak to that as someone who originally uh, were, are, was arguing for the narrower default. Is that uh, it's not? It's really a cropping tool and not really a security feature because of how the document object model lets you move frames and have other content on top of frames. So it wasn't really a security measure. I think the team is making a linguistic uh, argument, actually. Uh, no, I, I think he signaled the green yeah, yeah, yeah. so which it, views you're seeing. It, it's, a, it's, about, it's about least surprise. Like, if you call something a viewport capture in the document policy, then it should be capturing viewports. It shouldn't be capturing anything else. Well, I think the name of the method is get viewport media. Uh, and I think it's... Uh, it's a subtlety that we're always capturing a viewport, which is a rendering of things um, rather than something tied to the document. And um, there's also, from our end, I hope that the document policy here is general enough that it's not necessarily tied to one API, because we might want to change the API in the future. We might want to reuse this uh, opt-in mechanism in other, other future APIs, for example. Maybe get this by media at some point as well. Okay, and that that's where I start worrying, but maybe that's a future problem. All right, I'm not seeing anyone else on the queue. So I think, can we record a, a rough consensus on this? To be confirmed on the mailing lists. Yeah, to be confirmed on the mailing lists, so. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, a bit of foreshadowing for the next few months, but I also intend to uh, uh, suggest a cropping API that would work independent of get viewport media and might complement it in the way that any of our uh, seeks. So basically, if an application does want to only capture the iframe as uh, viewport, uh, it will have a way if my proposal is later accepted. Um, I'm done with this slide. Anybody else? Yes. There's a TBD there on user activation. Did you mean to talk about that or not? Uh, I did not, but I think that we're a bit ahead of schedule. So if you would like to talk about yeah, this. Go ahead. Well, uh, yeah, um, I don't know if 
I'll go first. I, I think uh, get viewport media should have uh, require user activation, like uh, get display media and get user media. Are you asking a question, Yanifar? Uh, I'm proposing that uh, get viewport media require user activation. Just to be clear, that's at least to me non-controversial, right? I mean, it's a fairly high privilege feature. So, so uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm not really objecting. I'm just uh, saying that we should probably think about this a bit. Uh, I see certain cases in which user activation makes sense, and somewhere it seems to me like just uh, it could be just automatic thinking, right? It could be that it does not actually confer any added benefits. So for example, before we open a tab, if we require a new tab, uh, open a link, right? And then if we require user activation, that prevents the application from spamming the user with 200 uh, new tabs. Here, I don't really know, I understand what we would be protecting against. Um, it seems like we would be at least making a bit more frictive one use case. And that one use case is if you open a new tab, a single new tab with user activation, uh, and now the new tab immediately loads something and says, hey, I want to capture myself and stream myself. Well, that requires an extra click. So it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely not so nice. And so I'm asking, what do we gain to offset this cost? I, th I think it's it's a good topic to discuss with user activation. Maybe uh, user activation should be updated so that when you click on the link, you open a tab, there's an audio player, and it will autoplay because there's user activation as well. Uh, but in general, I think that given it's a high privilege API, uh, we should we should go with user activation. We know it's safe. Uh, we know it's it's helping uh, some use cases. Like we we don't want to. Uh, spam people with, uh, for instance, uh, prompts. So we should just just do it. And if somebody complains later and identifies that there's a use case that we should uh, uh, fix, then probably it will be a user activation fix, maybe not a get viewport media fix. Um, I, I think that we could also uh, try to handle spamming uh, a bit less um, heavy handedly. We could say, for example, that after the first time that get viewport media is called, uh, it requires additional user activation. This way you allow the application to ask once as it loads, but still not spam the user. Um, I would what do you think about that? <laughs> I, I mean, couldn't hear you, sorry? I would tend to do the opposite. Uh, at least in Safari, with get user media, we were not able to handle uh, the, um, this uh, user activation. But uh, when you're capturing, there's no, and you, you want to call get user media again, again, there will be no additional icon telling, hey, this page is capturing, because it's already capturing. And user already said, okay, I'm allowing uh, capturing. Uh, if we remove user activation, in some cases, uh, the page, while doing, not interacting with it, we, we, you will suddenly see, oh, there's an icon saying, I, I'm sharing my tab with, with the page. Oh. How did it happen? And uh, that's why the first time you call get viewport media is important, I would say. Yeah, yeah I would tend to agree. And also, if, you, if, if you're selecting a tab, we might also need to account for the user selecting the wrong tab. And if, even if they see, like, maybe they see a thumbnail or something like that, and it's hard to tell what a document is. So it, once you open the full tab, and they go, oh, no, this is the wrong document. And if it's already shared to the group, that seems. Uh, let's say uh, um, less private. I, I well, uh, to... Yeah, and I think the general argument that UN was alluding to that uh, there may be reasons to escape uh, the existing rules of user activation. I, I don't know that there is anything so specific to our particular focus here, uh, capture that it wouldn't apply to other cases where user activation is required. So I think even Architecturally speaking, it's best if we start looking at, at it from the generic cases rather than the specific one. Um, <clears throat> so from my side, uh, I would be, uh, I would prefer to continue this discussion a bit later. I don't think that it's going to block us and I want to have some more time to think about this. Um, 
before I um, debate this further. Yes, you have a next meeting or next time we take this up. That sounds uh, good. Yeah. Uh, just to mention that we user activation is really hard to get uh, added and it's uh, so we need to have it uh, before anything ships or not. We need to solve that issue, make a decision before anything ships. And that's really important because otherwise it, it will become a nightmare to actually uh, change the behavior that is shipping. I agree completely, and that is precisely the reason why I don't want to just say yes. Well, that, that's, it goes the other way, though. I mean, it, it is actually possible to ship something that has requires user activation and then remove it later. It's the other way around that's not web compatible. The challenges are different in adding and removing restrictions. Some of them are uh, about getting consensus, and some of them are about existing applications and in both cases i prefer to try to get it right and that means i need to think just a bit more before committing uh, but also you know i'm just one person other people might have other opinions i do not have a binding opinion just yet okay uh you exhausted this topic thanks so. uh, from my side yes why don't we move to uh, display surface constraints? Yes. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for listening to me for such a long time. I'll try to uh, keep it brief here. Uh, basically, right now, when you call Get Display Media, uh, a browser that is perfectly spec compliant does not allow you any way of influencing in any way uh, what the user chooses. And the intention was to not limit the user's uh, choice. But then later, the spec says that by and then it, uh, by only applying certain constraints after the user makes the choice, it prevents influencing. So now we've got the question: limited and influencing are not exactly the same thing. And do we also want to limit influence uh, to prevent influencing of the user's choice? And here I've got a couple of arguments, and also I want to cite a couple of um, web developers. So uh, one thing that I want to cite is that currently we're already influencing the user's choice because we are presenting one of the options first. So uh, Chrome shows screens first, which is not uh, the safest thing, but it's kind of difficult to change. Um, Apple, I'm sorry, Safari only shows one choice. So that kind of limits uh, the user's choice. And Mozilla, I believe, is working on also introducing tabs, but right now it's only screens uh, or windows, and the order in which they're offered could also be said to be influencing the user. Um, so uh, the question is also whether influence influencing the user is such a bad thing, because influence could be, yes, uh, it could be used maliciously, but it could also be wielded productively. For example, you could try to push the user towards the safer choice, or you could uh, uh, push the user towards the more relevant choice. So for example, you could say, hey, I, I just need another tab. Don't show me your entire screen. No need. Next uh, slide, please. Um, so a lot of uh, web developers have uh, uh, <clears throat> um, verbalized, I forgot the word for ver uh, expressed, expressed interest in uh, in allowing us to either limit or influence the user's choice. Uh, and they cited all sorts of reasons. So uh, for example, that it saves clicks, like if you are, if that application knows that it wants just a tab, it doesn't have to get the user to choose tabs, or if it just needs a window, doesn't need to get, just show that one first. Uh, second one is, you know, a lot of applications want to capture something with audio, Audio is not supported on all types of capture. You want to push the user towards that. Um, you want some uh, browsers can capture certain uh, surfaces better. Tabs, for example, you can capture at higher FPS. Um, so you want to push the user towards that. Um, you want to app relevant uh, surfaces we've already discussed. So let's give an example. Let's say Meet, and if it knows that you're going to capture a, a slide then it, if it were to offer you slides first, that's gonna um, 
make it less likely for you to make a mistake. Uh, and that would be nice. Um, you also want to, uh, some uh, applications want to push users away from risky things, uh, like showing the entire screen. And um, also, some applications intend to actually break off the capture immediately if they see that you have captured screen or window or something else that they do not necessarily uh, approve. And then it's just going to be a waste of your time as the user uh, if they ca uh, captured that to begin with. And so the more uh, they can prevent you from making that mistake, the better. Next slide, please. So um, the proposal we're dealing with right now is that we could introduce a hint uh, where we basically say display surface uh, as a constraint. You say, ideally, I would want this one. You specify a constraint as ideal then browser, ideal window, or ideal monitor uh, or screen. Sorry, I forgot. Um, and the user shows you the same prompt it would ad otherwise would, but it needs to shuffle, or it may shuffle, the options that are offered to you, uh, the user, um, so that those things which the application asked for can appear um, more prominently. And if the uh, if the user agent believes that those to be less to be more risky, it could employ it. First of all, it could ignore this hint. Uh, second, it could employ additional warnings. So, for example, if uh, if the application tries to get you to share the screen, maybe it could explain how dangerous it is to capture the current screen, etc. Next slide, please. Uh, so here is the text uh, of the current proposal. And wall of text, I will give people some time. So uh, a couple of things to note here is that all other constraints are still um, processed only after the user makes the choice. Uh, only this uh, constraint is processed before, and um, the, it, is, it may only be a service a hint. It cannot uh, be used to actually limit the user's choice. Next slide, please. Uh, so here is some text of how you could uh, potentially use that constraint. Very simple. You just to you just add display surface ideal and then the type of your choice. And at least for Chrome, what would happen here is that you still get all of the options, but the one normally entire screen would have been the first one highlighted. And in this case, it would just be Chrome tab. And uh, just a second. Yeah, okay. So I've said all I've got to say about this. Um, any questions? Yeah, so who's in? Am I first in the queue? Uh, yes, Jan Ivar and then uh, UN. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, when we discussed this on GitHub, uh, I thought uh, we made some progress but on this. But we also um, talked about some, uh, some give and take, some uh, security mitigations to perhaps prevent the API from returning uh, maybe not not list this, the the requesting tab in the tab list. Maybe not list the requesting window, the, the browser window in the window list, and, and those things. So I think um, I think I would like to see some of those mitigations put into the spec uh, in order to allow this. Um, um, and if we can do that, I I, I do agree that uh, there is some uh, benefit here in. Um, I should also say that constraints in get display media, uh, the min constraint and the exact constraints are already disallowed. So it would uh, have to be ideal constraints. And I think there's some value in uh, the argument made here that by specifying, uh, at least for the way the Chrome picker is built, that it has these uh, sub panes, I think it makes some sense to, uh, to steer uh, uh to let these uh, in practice these uh some of the other sub tabs other than full screen be the active one because full screen isn't really a safe choice either 
Um, I did want to comment earlier when you mentioned the spec there, it had language about limiting and, and uh, influencing choice. It was talking about the application, not the user agent, which is what we're talking about here. So the user agent, of course, can do, um, can, can, uh, uh, it's not necessarily bound by these same rules, but we're talking about here exposing a constraint that would let the application uh, service a hint, as you said. So I think that that might work, but I would like to see some of the security mitigations that we talked, maybe even normative language that we do not return, that must not return the same tab, for example. So are you suggesting this for for the for the only for the case where this constraint is used, or is, are you suggesting this for for any any use of get the media, I, I, I'm suggesting this as a uh, mitigation we need to do before we add a constraint like this. So um, <clears throat> uh, I would like to apologize that uh, your suggestions and what we've discussed about them did not make it into the slides. The slides are a screenshot of the spec of the PR that I produced before we discussed this. My understanding, though, of what we discussed is a bit different of uh, what you uh, of what you have now mentioned. I remember that we discussed adding a recommendation that the user agent should employ additional warnings before letting the user choose the current tab. I don't think that we discussed completely removing this, and I think that they even said that currently there are enough use cases out in the wild of uh, self-capture that we can just shave them off um so that is where we differ and if you're open to using a recommendation uh that says warn the user this is important uh you and warn the user can even be to completely hide the option for self-capture and make it make it a lot more frictive to get there right like you could have another pane you might have to click advanced you might get a couple of more warnings it's completely up to the user agent uh but i don't believe in removing that option and in addition so, uh, i would just i would just yeah. mention that you would or if you were to remove that option you would uh, potentially be pushing users towards sharing their entire screen when they just want to share their entire tab. So first you would be removing own tab, then you would have to remove own window, then any user that wants to show one of these would have to share the entire uh, wind, uh, screen. And if you want to remove that too, then I think that we're completely out of scope. Right. Um, the problem though is that um... Yeah, so I think I would like to have some strong recommendations on user agents. I think uh, it sounds like you would be amenable to that. Uh, I think that um, would make a lot of sense, yes. And that would be specific warnings that are not general warnings about any sorts, but that are specific to choosing your your own tab. And yes. uh, yeah, so yes, uh, that that sounds good. Uh, I would have guess liked that we could go a little further and norm since um, specifications don't have that much um, authority over what user agents do in a, a user interface and user experience, which is appropriate, I think. Um, so there was an opportunity here to perhaps have normative language since we could actually detect uh, the case where get display media returns the uh, uh its own it's uh, the self tab which is the concern concern we have uh, so we could normatively prevent it so i just want to let the working group know that that is an option that we could agree on uh, if we don't think it's overly strict um you when you're in the queue yeah i have a, a few questions um the first question would be uh why should we allow screen like, what, why should we allow a web page to say, hey, I want to capture the whole screen since it's the least secure approach and we, we actually want users to move away from that. So right. I would say right. it's fine to add uh, a constraint that say, hey, let's try to focus on capturing less, uh, but not screen. Uh, so that's the first comment here. Uh, my second comment on the API is uh, maybe I have a bias. I'm, really dis I generally dislike constraints <laughs> so 
uh, I'm like, why should we go with constraints with like something like display surface ID or browser? Uh, if we can add just uh, an additional parameter, which would be a preferred display surface as a second parameter, and then you, you, you pass a string, which would be uh, either browser, window, or even something else. We, like maybe in the future we'll have like, oh, we actually want these kind of things. It's not, it's a subset of tabs, for instance. Yeah, let's say, hey, I, I want to capture, uh, I don't know, Google, uh, any Google tab, whatever, something, I, I, don't, I don't really know, but, it seems like moving away from uh, constraints in general <laughs> would be good to me. Uh, and the third thing uh, is, uh, I, I think it's, we discussed uh, adding security mitigations explicitly about uh, the cases where uh, we think get display media is a big issue, which is the self tab or uh, same origin tab issue. Uh, I'm looking at the, the, the slide there and there, there's a picker. And my, I was, since you're uh, probably typing this, I was w wondering what are Chrome plans to do in terms of mitigation, in terms of UI, to try to uh, help user understand that self-capture is uh, a potentially dangerous thing. So, uh, no, we've not prototyped this. This is um, straightforward enough that it does not look like prototype it is necessary. Uh, we can, you know, just ch choose another pane is relatively easy in code. Uh, sure. In terms of employing additional warnings, uh, that is an open question and we would have to employ, uh, to uh, approach the correct people. I'm not a UX designer and I could not begin to imagine what would be appropriate here. Um, when you said, what you said about using an extra parameter instead of constraints, I at least do not have any uh, problem with that. That's okay with me. Uh, maybe others would have the, a different opinion. And what you said about removing the screen, uh, that is interesting because that is the most risky, but I think that we are, uh, we would be entering slightly dangerous territory here because you would be pushing um, browsers to, towards making or keeping the screen as the uh, default option so that there would still be an a way for an application to signal that they want that by just not saying anything. And whereas you could, more easily change the default uh, selection to something else if the application still had a way to invoke the legacy uh, use case, uh, legacy behavior. It seems like uh, Chrome might have like uh, uh, a migration issue but in terms of API. I think that uh, if we were starting from scratch, uh, we would go with uh, not, uh, not allowing to default to screen and uh, because that's that's the most risky issue. And uh, in terms of Safari uh, implementation, currently we are only uh, allowing screen. Uh, at some point we will have a picker, and I'm pretty sure that the default will will not be will not be screen. And uh, I don't think that we have a use case where apps should be still allowed to have as a default screen. So uh, I think. Sir Sorry for cutting in here, but um, I just want to say Firefox does not default to screen. And I'm sorry, Bernard, for jumping the queue here, uh, but since relevant to this, I, I do agree with you and we should disallow uh, the full screen constraint um, or at least ignore it. So having some constraints is better than none, but I think that the on-ramp for Chrome and Edge here uh, would not be uh, meaningless, like it would still be useful and it would be of no cost to, um, to Safari and to Firefox because you can just ignore that. The uh, spec that I'm suggesting, uh, the PR uh, I've posted allows the user agent to ignore the hint and you are you would be okay to do that. Um, yes, but we would like the other browsers to ignore full screen also. You would be um, giving us an on-ramp towards that. I, well, I want but to... you already default to full screen, so that should be fine, right? So ignoring no, because, it is existing behavior. No, because, because once you introduce those and if a lot of applications start using that and we see UMA, uh, user metrics that um, that shows us that enough applications have already migrated to asking for the least risky thing and maybe that users generally don't pick the risky thing, then it would be a lot easier to motivate the decision of just making that no longer the default. Right now- I'm not following, but we could take it out offline, I guess. 
Sure, but uh, just in one word, uh, it's easier to make a small change. Right, but the smaller change I think would be uh, a display surface constraint where the val uh, legal values is window and browser. Uh, it's easier to make a small change in perceived behavior of the application. Uh, I'm sorry, of the browser. So if right, but we can discuss that later. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean to say is, uh, it would be difficult if right now the default is to uh, to show the entire screen first. Then it's a big UX change to make it no longer so. Yeah, um, I wanted to comment on. Uh, I understand you, you went and Yanni was concerned about displaying screen, but I wanted to go back to the uh, developer request because I think there's a contradiction here. Uh, maybe we can talk about how to how to get rid of it, but. Um, so uh, in terms of the list, the things that the developers have been asking for, so one of them is discover the surface type that supports audio. Am I correct that, that the only surface type that currently does that is full screen? No, tab. So in Windows, it is tab. Okay. It's only tab. On Windows, it is tab or full screen. Uh, right. On all other operating systems, uh, it is just tab. OK. Um, how about uh, when you say save clicks on the journey towards the user's historic preferences? That would be actually somehow uh, being able to capture like when they start looking at the different uh, display surfaces, like what they clicked? No. So currently, uh, the application knows exactly what the what type of display surface the user chose, right? You right, eventually. Get settings. Right. right, eventually. So, uh, maybe I misunderstood. So. Uh, I hope that my answer would be relevant. Will be relevant. Currently, without any changes, somebody calls Get Display Media. User chooses something. The application knows exactly what they chose, right? It, well, they know so, what surface they chose. They don't know what app they chose, like a web sure. window, right? Yes, and that is all. Uh, all that is uh, being meant here, as far as I know. Okay. Uh, I am quoting Pexip, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but at least, if I were to to repeat the argument for my own sake. It would be that you um, you just see oh this user has chosen tab nine out of ten times, let's offer them tab okay. first. Okay, so you're not asking for any more uh, like uh, uh, you're not you're not just what they just what they chose, not any more info than that. Okay, just just the surface type. Okay, uh, and as far as the option that supports the high FPS capture, are you saying that's tab typically? Uh, in Chrome, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that, right? That's just one example. But um, any kind of uh, technical preference towards some kind, like, for example, away from Windows because they don't have audio is uh, called out specifically, but it's also another instance of this type of preference. So when I'm one is trying to understand, I'm just trying to understand if these requests are somehow contradicting what UN and Yanevar suggested. It doesn't sound like it is, though. Like if we if we didn't have the screen capture, would any of these requests be violated? Um, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Well, so my question was, say say you know you didn't have screen. Say my the concern overall is that you know you could use this to try to push somebody towards the screen capture, which is the most risky option, right? I think that's what people have been saying. That concern is. I'm just wondering. Say we took that out of the picture, right? You could, um, you weren't allowed to uh, push somebody towards screen. I, I'm just trying to understand whether any of the developer requests would not be possible. It sounds like they still would be possible even without screen capture. Yes, and by and the way, I just uh, another reason uh, yeah. to allow screen is that you might have more than one screen. So you could be pushing the user towards S screen while still employing additional warnings over the current screen. Well, that's that's a question well, though, because I don't think you have enough information to 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 do that and, and to get that info is, uh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, you. I, I think you're going where I want to go. I was going to say all monitors are dangerous, right? Because uh, you right. can have uh, panning, you can move browser windows from one to the other. So we have to that assume they're all dangerous. So uh, am I hearing that, except for the part where we. Uh, also support pushing the user towards the current uh, the current screen or S screen. Sorry, uh, are we done with everybody with everything else? 
Well, I wouldn't want you to be able to push the user towards a particular window, but just if it's towards window capture or tab, that seems okay to me. Yes, uh, we have never suggested pushing the user towards a specific window. In fact, there is no mechanism by which you could specify that if you look at the PR. And also, there is no way for you to even know what windows are available. So right, without right. This, That's what it is currently. it's yeah. not possible. So um, I think Tim Parton. Uh, Tim, uh, yeah. Tim, 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 sorry about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, um, and then we'll have to move on. But go uh, ahead. Yeah. Uh, just, just to say that I dislike the idea of having a heuristics-based, uh, most commonly used selected thing. It, it, it's a complete nightmare to test, and it's unpredictable um, what happens. Like you know, I, I, it's it. If we can avoid doing that, I'm like everything else here is is useful. But um, heuristics-based. Pickers that move things around are, are a nightmare. Uh, I don't think any heuristic is offered here, and the heuristic would be maybe on the application side. If the application wants to employ heuristic, well, you would have to take it up with yeah. the application. Um, well, no, on this list there was um, direct users to. Uh, there was on, on your description, there was uh, historic preferences. Yes, but uh, this, this that's is a heuristic, heuristic, surely. No, that is an application explaining why they want to have uh, this hint, but they can use that hint for whatever. So they uh, are thinking that they might use that in order to, uh, you know, to, to, to push the, uh, the user towards the historic preference, but the user agent will not do that. Okay, or I think we've run out of to mandate that. I think we've run out of time on this item, and I'm going to move uh, to the next one. Um, but uh, before we do that, uh, do we have kind of a summary of where we've gotten uh, on this discussion? I think Elad made a suggestion. So what I heard and kind of recorded was uh, support for uh, the approach with an exception on the screen hint yeah. that need more discussion. Yeah. I think we want to make sure we have some stronger language as well on warnings, at least, of returning uh, self-capture. OK, uh, sounds like bad in consensus to me. Um, anything okay. else? I think we're going to move on to uh, echo cancellation. Harold. Yes, thank you for your time. OK, echo cancellation. It's been in the spec forever. And it's uh, kind of uh, always been some, some kind of weird magic to me. But uh, I tried to draw, draw up some. This was something that came came to me from my audio team, in which and we, where they said, we need to actually control this stuff in the, in web applications. And uh, here's what we want to control, and uh, here's the reasons why. Can you explain it to the working group? So uh, this is uh, really Olga's uh, technology, but uh, I'm presenting it anyway. So you know how echo cancellation works in principle. You get an in, uh, audio signal in, and you feed it into the room. You put a microphone in the room, and it picks up the the sound you want, and and what and the sound that you're feeding into it. But what you want out is uh, just the signal that was generated in the room, not what not the sound that you're injecting into it. It's not as simple as just subtracting because uh, the room transform function is complex, contains delays and distortions and. Uh, and non-linear effects and echoes and reverb and all that stuff. So it's complicated, and it's not getting any simpler. But uh, one critical part of echo cancellation is knowing what it's supposed to remove. Next slide. The current implementation is in Chrome is kind of stupid. 
it's it's because the reference signal is the sum of audio op, all audio outputs from a pair connection and uh, i mean some of that might be might not be feeling speakers at all some of, some of it might be mixed up with other sources or have additional processing done to it before it makes it out and of course there might be others other things that are generating noise in the room that you would would like to cancel out too playing music in the background or something so we're trying to revise this next slide so it would be more ideal if we said that we cancel the audio output but then the question becomes which audio output well most of the time like when i'm speaking now what goes out to the default sound output for the system is the sound that you want to cancel in some cases it's not because especially headphones are trickier beasts than you want them to be it uh, some of them have rather strong acoustic or electrical coupling between the headphone and the microphone and some outputs aren't using the native speaker they're using some other other speaker for for room noise so seen from the application you want to identify what output is being used that is most important for the echo canceller and then tell the echo canceller to use this output should be simple right next so in the, in the spirit of uh, keep keep it simple we have an enumeration of output devices it's the media capture output sync id we have a way to tie that to a media stream track where you already have where you already have the control surface for turning echo cancellation out on and off and uh, we can specify the special value of no empty string as in other places to mean default audio output for the system or whatever you can get that is closest to the audio output so either this is a good idea and we should merge it either it's a bad idea at all totally a bad idea and we should close it and go away and be ashamed or it uh, might be need, need some fine tuning i think the proposal is as simple as it can get so my personal opinion is that uh, anything we can do is anything we can do do to it is making it more complicated and so uh, i think we should just do this but uh, i see that there's a, there's a queue let's discuss okay wow um uh, so who is um, first? I'm I lost. Uh, yeah. Is it uh, Yanivar? Uh, uh, it's me. If it's not Tim, um, I can't tell. Uh, well, how about uh, let's let's give Tim. Oh, a I, I think it's me. Okay, Tim, you want to go? Well, uh, I'm jumping the queue. Uh, I'm wholly in favor of doing something in this area. I think it's vitally essential. What I don't understand is whether this will cover. The output from web audio, which is a really common use case, that you get a bunch of bunch of tracks in from WebRTC and other places, mix them in web audio, and then throw them out into the room. But you still want to listen to the microphone in the room and maybe and put that somewhere. Um, so you want to you do want to control the echo cancelling, but you need to be able to have the output being something that may have come through web audio at some point. Yeah, as long as it comes out of out of the system default output, it should cover it. I mean, in some in some implementations, the logical device to attach to is uh, in code is what's called the monitor of the system output. So you actually get the feedback signal right from the next to the speaker wire. So it would cover 
web audio process statement as long as it makes it to the speaker. Okay. Ian Ivar? Yeah, so I think uh, the Mozilla view here is that we don't need this API to to do correct echo cancellation. So um, we don't see that. Um, we're not sure why the user agent would need the JavaScript help on this one. And it seems like uh, this is something that implementations could fix. Um, um, the, the implementation should already know if uh, the user agent should know if headsets are being used, basically, for example. No, I mean, uh, if you have uh, if you have a headset plugged in and there's, there's also noise coming out of the speakers, which one do you cancel and why? Well, all sound that's coming from the browser, the browser should know about. So yes. having another chef in the kitchen with the application, it's not clear to us how we would use that information in any helpful way. So, so uh, the view from uh, so I spoke to some Mozilla audio engineers, and their view was that uh, we did not need this API. Okay, disagreement of, on the need, and do you agree that that uh, we, when we what, and to put it this way, which uh, audio output are you select are you currently selecting for the for the for canceling, for echo cancellation input? Uh, I believe we have access to the rendered audio. So it, it wouldn't cover things like uh, web audio. And uh, our audio, main audio engineer, uh, Paul Adno, has been uh, helpful for websites, helping websites uh, also work with Chrome in this regard. On Mozilla Hubs, for example, and I can provide some links. And more than that, I cannot. Uh, I don't have uh, Paul's uh, full knowledge of echo cancellation, so I can't uh, comment deeper on that. Okay. So I li I'd, I'd like to have Paul's opinion on the headphone case. Uh, UN. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would echo Yonivar's uh, uh, opinion. Um, I think that the user agent has more knowledge than the web application. So, it knows exactly where it's uh, rendering audio, in which paths, which microphone is connected to which speaker, and so on, so that it can do a good job at uh, doing echo cancellation. For instance, if you know that you're using the speaker that is close, that you're using a mic that is close to a speaker uh, geographically, which is the case, like in some setups, we, we know that then you can actually do some uh, nice tricks. I, I do not know how web applications will be able to, 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 do, to do that or to provide knowledge that uh, the user agent or the OS would do. So I don't understand how Safari would be able to actually make use of such uh, hint. And uh, I do not know how web applications would be able to use it as well. Um, I'm in the queue, and I, I have uh, some questions about this. Um, uh, basically, um, so Harold, you're basically saying what Chrome currently does is they use the sum of all audio outputs from Pure Connection. And um, is I, I'm just trying to understand why uh, are there, is the desire to let App individual to improve the Chromium implementation or to give applications the ability to do their own implementation. I'm just trying to understand the, the goal here. No, uh, we're not trying to let, we're not trying to make uh, apps do their own like echo cancellation. Uh, when uh, the proposal first came up internally, there was actually a proposal that we should have a special mode. Uh, for reproducing uh, Chrome's current behavior or previous behavior, but uh, my response, my suggestion in response was, uh, why uh, uh, we shouldn't try to reproduce that bug? 
So uh, let's let's just fix it and fi fix it. Uh, so what I'm hearing is that uh, that uh, the two other browser vendors uh, representatives are saying that they think that the browser can figure out what to cancel automatically. And I think Tim was the next in queue. Well, I, I'm not quite finished yet because I've heard requests from applications to be able to uh, basically have an adjustable noise cancellation. Think of it as a transform stream, right? Or an echo canceling transform stream. So I can understand why somebody might want to build um, build that in an app. And they might not have access, all the access that the browser has. Uh, I was just trying to understand whether that's the goal of this or it has no relationship at all, or whether it even no, would it be does. useful for that kind of request. No, it has no relationship to this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, the, you can't model echo cancellation as a, can, as a transform stream because it's a, three, it's a two input, so, so two input uh, object. You can uh, model it as uh, as uh, as as a, a process that takes uh, audio two audio inputs in the form of form of streams and then uh, and then uh, does synchronized things to them. I guess you, you could still do the uh, one input one output and then as another parameter which would be right, the right, stream. Right for instance. Right. And if, we, you, uh, if you apply this with get user media echo cancellations off or false, then you, you would be good with uh, burnouts uh, uh, use cases. Now that would be that would be an embedded transform. Because the actual the actual uh, the actual echo, echo cancellation requires two signals. Right, yeah. right. What what I'm saying is that you have the input, which is microphone, you have the output which would be the uh, echo cancel stream. And then when you create the transform, you, you pass a parameter, which would be a stream, which will be the reference stream that is being played and that you will use for echo cancellation. And you yes, have your yes, free, you have, a, you have free, your triple. That's a two input model. It, it takes be done in transform stream. Yeah. So that, that's an interesting uh, thing to thing to do, but I don't, but it's not this proposal. Okay. Uh, was uh, I guess is it uh, Tim? You're back in the queue. Yeah, just to there's another way of looking at this, which is to say, are there situations to to address Yanivar's point particularly? Uh, there are are there situations where you are playing something out of the speaker that you don't want to cancel, and and I claim that there are very occasionally situations where there's something that you're playing out of the speaker which you would like to be captured. By the microphone, um, it's rare, but it does happen. I uh, think of kind of is background it, music or something like that. Right. Is it coming from the browser? Uh, it could be. Well, in that case, the if it's coming from the uh, controlling application, then it has the audio and it can insert it itself. Yeah, it may choose not to. You wouldn't get the you wouldn't get the acoustics of the room that way. Like, I don't know, imagine you're playing, portraying, right. I mean, I'm in an echoey room. So that's like an echo promotion feature. Uh, I, I think it's a rare use case, but I mean, I, I, we stumbled over it with, um, with yoga studios where they, they want to make people feel like they're in the room. So they want the music to sound like it's, I mean, you can't do it, but they would like the music to sound like you're in a studio. Yeah, in some cases, just turning echo cancellation off will do it. But yeah, that has a whole set of other unpleasant side effects as well, um, yeah. which we've discovered. <laughs> um, Sergio? Yeah, I, you go back one slide. And... Oh, hold on. Uh... Yeah, I think that this uh, proposal does not solve any of the problems with Chrome. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean. For example, this would not help in 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 fixing web audio echo in in, 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 in with uh, WebRTC. I think that the the use case uh, that Tim is uh, 
is proposing, I think is quite interesting. I have also here people that wants to do um, echo cancellation, but not even from the from the audio that it is playing being played or or captured by by one uh, by by the by the current bro by the current browser, for example, in case that you want to have multiple participants in the same room, you won't like to have like one uh, main participant that it is doing the mixing of all the participant and wants to perform um, the cancel of the audio between the different mixes. So it is not even uh, so. They what I have heard is that they they will not even want to to even cancel its own noise, but it is like being able to have uh, the different uh, streams uh, considering the remote and different co uh, streams considering local and to be able to apply uh, echo cancellation on, on all this on all this mix so uh, i think that this is uh, matches what you said about the or also bernard about the transform so something that we can modularize and and be able to to implement echo cancellation not only on what it is being played or captured locally but on, on different streets received by different parts. And so I think that there is like three different uh, things to consider. First is that Chrome still has issue with Echo and this is will not solve it. <laughs> there are some use cases that are interesting for, for this uh, use case, but I don't think that they are very clear. Then, for example, team explained out the, the, the issues about tuning the echo cancellation. So maybe it's a bit interesting to, to work a bit more on, on the, these specific use cases that need the API. And also I think that it is interesting to, to work on a different, maybe it's not here, it should be in with uh, web audio or something like that, to be able to, to expose only the echo cancellation part of WebRTC to the browsers. I think the last one should be, take. Uh... And could very well be taken up as a as a proposal in web audio. Yep. What I'm hearing now is that we have uh, significant opposition to to making uh, an API out of this at all because uh, uh, the browser the browser should be able to able to do the right thing automatically. I don't see any opposition to fixing Chrome's bugs. No. <laughs> But I'd like to see see that we end up in a state where we actually have consistent behavior of echo cancellation between browsers in terms of uh, what are we actually canceling. I found it interesting to say that to see that uh, that you can you you would like to cancel only the output from the browser because if you have like two applications on running on the machine. And uh, one of uh, and both are producing audio. Should the audio from the other application be cancelled or not? I think we've seen uh, different implementations. Uh, there was an RN noise version that, at one point that would remove all audio, all knowledge that you were at an airport, for example. Uh, you could. Mm -hmm make a subjective comment that you might actually want that background noise in some cases, if you're in a stadium or something. So but we already have uh, some ability. I think echo cancellation true is, is mostly focused on cases like this though. So, um, but more use cases are definitely interesting, but it, it's not clear if they belong in this working group. Also, I, I would mention- uh, that... It would be interesting to see it solved with the uh, audio workload, for example. See what JavaScript can figure out there. I would also mention uh, some efforts done by OSCs where you can have different uh, echo canceller or different audio rendering styles that the user can select uh, himself. And uh, like uh, full echo canceller or natural uh, filtering or things like that, that might also be in scope there. Uh, Guido? Yes, uh, uh, I think uh, the motivation for Chrome, I'm, I'm not part of the audio team, but uh, the motivation is that since we have the audio output devices API, so Chrome can have output on different output devices and the echo canceller can 
can have only one output reference signal to, to do the canceling. And this is so that you can choose which is the reference signal that you want to use for, for to, to do the canceling. So of course, if you, if you only output to the default device, of course, this, this API doesn't make any sense. Or if you if you use an echo canceller that is uh, uh, smart enough to have multiple reference signals, uh, but uh, uh, the one in Chrome and I guess it, it's a common situation for uh, in audio is to have uh, uh, the um, yeah canceller that has uh, one uh, one output reference signal and yeah, that that's what the motivation is. All the other things like the web audio and so on, those, those are separate boxes that the audio team in, in Chrome is, is working on fixing and are not related to this. Okay, so can we go back to the first slide on this uh, topic? I think it's the previous one. So uh, I did file an is the issue and the pull request, and I'd like to see the comments on the issue about the need, whether there's a need for an API for this or not. And uh, I haven't seen much uh, comment on the shape of the API. So, uh, so if we were to conclude that uh, that uh, this this was a there was a need for selecting the reference signal the, uh, in such a simple-minded way, then uh, it, it sounds like this API could be possibly okay. But uh, at the moment, we don't have any any trace of consensus that. Uh, such an API is needed. Is that uh, where we are? Well, uh, are you suggesting that we need a CFC on the mailing list for this? I'm I suggesting think that, that we should uh, should uh, at least uh, take another round of discussion on the bug before okay. before going for a C C CFC. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, Dom, can you read us back what you think the summary is? Um, so I've scribed how I'm saying I would like to invite comments on the issue on whether the API is needed or not. I haven't seen much comment on the shape of the API. If we were to conclude that there was such a, a need, this API may be okay, but no consensus on the need for such an API. Okay. Okay. I think this item is done. Okay. Um, so we've reached the, the wrap up uh, stage of the meeting. Um, just wanted to make sure that we have uh, all of the understand all the action items uh, going forward, things we need to do to follow up on the meeting. Um, are, are there any calls for working group consensus that we need to file as a result of some of the things we've talked about? You have anything like oh, that? Uh, yeah. yeah anyway. uh, do we want to? Is it premature to do a call for consensus on get viewport media, or do we, we? We should probably get a spec written up. Yeah. Um, I think any preference for whether we write it up in the existing screen share document or a separate document? Or maybe mm -hmm. that's not for the whole working group. Not producing more documents seems like a good idea. Uh, Dom, do you have a, an issue with that or using the same spec as a living model? Um, I, I know you're hoping that to I have it. the recommendation. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess at the end of the day, that's really the main question I have. What, what timelines of implementation are we looking at? Uh, if you all are going to run and implement this uh, tomorrow, then I have no concerns. Uh, if this is going to be a protected implementation roadmap for the next uh, three years, then uh, I have more concerns. <laughs> it's going to be in between. So let me ask maybe the inverse question. What are the benefits of having it in the same uh, document? 
Well, I think the benefits is that it would reuse a lot of the same uh, 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 permissions. Uh, we, we, we want the same uh, privacy mitigations, uh, like uh, what I want to say, in-browser uh, privacy indicators, stuff like that. So, But surely we can um, link or reference them, right? Yeah, we can. Yeah, my, but my th there's a certain I'm, symmetry here. Oh. My concern would be that uh, screen capture, at least so far, hasn't even gotten to CR, right? And I don't think it has that great prospects of getting there. I mean, other than what uh, a lot might do. So in some ways, it might hold it back. It, this had, must, seems like it might have the potential to go to CR before screen capture. Well, any activity, well, that's hard to say, right? So adding a more interesting uh, API uh, might actually garner more interest in finishing the spec. I don't actually, we haven't done an analysis of why screen capture isn't at CR yet. So well, so yeah. we've been busy with uh, other things. And that's well, just another thing. I more like the folks who are working on it aren't working on it anymore, but anyway. So uh, one thing that I had to consider is that uh, writing and reading specs is not super easy. And uh, it would be easy to confuse Get Viewport Media and Get Display Media and their respective requirements if we put them in the same document. And if we were to use two different documents, then that's far less likely. Right. Just one argument to consider. I think that. Uh, the longer a uh, document gets, the less people tend to read all of it and understand all of it. I would also say that uh, in terms of testing, we'll probably have a, a different folder for WPT, like get Media right, right, and right, right. screen capture. And so different folders, different specs. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like sounds like the pr main uh, proponents are they are somewhat favor favorable of a, of a separate spec, so I'm happy to I'm happy to yield to the yield to the people who have to do the work. Uh, Harold, uh, if you've got uh, other arguments, I, I'm I would be very happy to hear them. I, you know, I don't have a very strong opinion here. Uh, I th I see I see the arguments for for make, making small specs. That's that's why I've done so many of them. I was trying to so I'm I'm kind of well, I was trying to argue the other viewpoint for once. It's a more more to keep track of. But you sound compelling. Sound more compelling than me. Okay. Well. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of leaning more toward a single spec, but I guess we're not going to resolve that in this meeting. Okay. Um, are there other items to follow up on uh, as a result of what we've been discussing today? Any any actions in the working group that we need to take? Uh, if, if there's not anything more to discuss, I would like to actually bring up the plan for the October meeting, uh, October virtual interim. Uh, let me stop sharing this and start sharing uh, that agenda. And then Talk about that. Okay. Um, so basically, we had a whole bunch of discussion on uh, uh, media capture transfer and that we just weren't able to fit into this meeting. Um, so I'm proposing that we basically devote the next or the October interim entirely to to that. Um, and so here's kind of a sketch of what that um, meeting agenda would look like. Basically, uh, as we said, we still have this open CFC on transferable meeting stream tracks, only had two responses. So uh, allocated some time in case there's anything to discuss uh, from that CFC. Then um, as we noted in this meeting, uh, uh, there have been a number of issues raised in what WG streams, which are probably relevant to this discussion. I don't know if I could prevail on you, Yanivar, to present some of those or at least discuss what's what's open and what's what the situation is. Um, and so that I think is an important part of of um, some of this is understanding what's going on with what WG streams, some of the limitations, and, and where we're going with that. 
Uh, then UN had a discussion of media capture transform issues. Um, so that's an, another item, and I think uh, Harold would like to maybe present something on the on the transform API, the other proposal. Um, and then we have an alternative proposal from UN and Yanivar. Um, so this would be, uh, I think, a meeting where we have two hours to kind of get into all of this. It's it's quite detailed, in particular. Uh, some of it, like the what WD streams issues, I wasn't personally paying a lot of attention to, but I think it probably deserves it. Just a few comments that uh, I believe the web working group streams issues and media capture and transform issues. It's roughly the same topic. And yeah, they're similar, but um, it's it's like uh, it seems like some time to just discuss the nature of the what WD stream stuff before we okay. get into it, because um, I'm not sure people are paying attention to it, and it's. Uh, we were also thinking that maybe we could invite some people who, who are the, you know, the authors of streams and editors to kind of give us a sense of whether some of those issues are going to get resolved or how difficult they are. Or, yeah, that, that's uh, what I, I was trying to do in the slide. I can try to, since we have two weeks, I can try to improve them a little bit. I think Yoniva pointed out that I should, uh, for instance, mark the explicitly the. the what were in stream issues explicitly. Uh, there might be some of the issues that you mentioned that I did not cover. I can look at those. Yeah, I think, I think you know, we can, with a full two hours, I think we can uh, do a better job of kind of getting into all of it. But um, Sounds good. yeah, so this is roughly um, the, uh, the proposed agenda for October. I, I'm sorry that it wouldn't leave much time for anything else, but I think I think I feel, I feel fairly confident we can use almost the entire time just for discussion of all this stuff because it's uh, and it's also very important not just to this working group but to other working groups that are using streams uh, to understand the, the issues of the pipelines and so forth. Uh, I guess I apologize in advance to a lot or, or other folks who might want time on the agenda in October because I don't think uh, people agree that we can probably fill the entire time with this agenda. Yeah, I kind of suspect. So, uh, yeah. so, yet to clarify, uh, the slide you and was set to present did cover the what WG streams issues, um, uh, at least mentioning their existence. And uh, right, right. since they, they were mostly filed in uh, to address the way that um, we're, we want to use the what, you, what right. WG streams for real time streams. And that's that's right. where all the issues are coming from. So they yeah, are really just, only relevant I, to our working group. Yeah, I think these these are the, uh, the, the issues I pulled out of the issues list that I think might be relevant. Uh, I don't know if there are others, Yanivar, um, that would be on this list as well. Uh, but I think these cover most of the ones that are referred to there. Um, I guess the thing is I w wanted to understand to what extent are some of these things going to get fixed or are they not going to get fixed or what the status is with respect to what WD streams. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, some of them uh, are more promising than, than others, I would say. Also, right. I should note that the API that that uh, you and I have agreed on is a stream-based proposal. So these right. issues are tangential to that proposal, right? Oh, they're not. A, the, the, the proposal isn't affected by whether these things get fixed or not? Well, it, it's a stream-based proposal. so. Right. <laughs> uh, we already, you and already presented uh, months ago a non-stream based proposal. Okay. That we didn't have any takers on. So, um, that, but we we do feel that the uh, this is a good compromise that at least allow you to do things like cloning and apply constraints instead of uh, T, for example, which is a, okay. an issue. But I still yeah. feel we need solutions in the what WD stream spec for things like T. So uh, in any case, I posted a link to these slides on the list and also a link to the issues. Um, and so um, I think, uh, and, and uh, probably maybe we should have a list of, of issues that are being, uh, well, um, is the proposal, will we have a, an actual document to discuss in the proposal, Yanivar? Um, uh, you want a, a spec document? Well, if it's possible in, in the two weeks or whatever we have, that would uh, also, I think, advance the discussion. Um, uh, sure. We could work on that. 
Okay. So anyway, we're going to, uh, I think the goal is to post all this stuff to the list and try to get discussion going on the list and in the GitHub issue, specific GitHub issues, um, and also have a spec so we can have a, you know, full two hours with a lot of, uh, with people having, you know, familiarized themselves. Um, and also it wouldn't be too bad if we had uh, demos that address some of the uh, concerns here. I know, Yanni, you've been working on a few fiddles to, to try to illustrate some of the problems. Um, and uh, they're, they're linked in the slides. Oh, OK. OK, great. Anyway, so that's the plan for October. Any other suggestions for how we might uh, kind of tackle this? So, uh, Yanni, will you clean this list, list up to, to get rid of the closed ones? Well, if they're really um, yeah <laughs> i mean you cl you close no, 11 the, uh, by yourself so that was the only one i noticed i don't know if all the others yes there's one closed issue there's uh, one closed issue here which was uh, an attempt to um have the source manage the lifetime of uh, video frames which was unsuccessful so the fact that uh it was unsuccessful shows that streams can't really do this it's not easy to do through, uh, to solve that with streams, where a source can manage the all the video frames in their lifetimes, which is a problem. <clears throat> and it's a problem uh, uh, when you combine streams and, and uh, web codecs and uh, things like uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the issue that has uh, um, we have some hope with is the last one which is to have a, a pipeline without uh, buffering built into every transform stream. Um, so if we can address that, um, it might help with the applicability of some of the other things. I don't know if it's practical, but I, I would think it might be useful to have a initial kind of five minutes at the beginning stating what problem we're trying to solve. Um, like I, I, I feel like we, we've dived down into this repeatedly and then we end up arguing about what the use cases are. And I, and I feel like maybe if we started with like just a very brief statement of you know, the goals here, it might make the, the rest of the discussion more focused. And that's what yeah, I think, I think we do want to uh, document starts off with, of course. Well, the slides that you and I uh, were set to present uh, include goals. So um, yeah. and there's uh, twofold. One is to identify the issues with using streams. And the other one was to uh, identify some of the issues with the uh, MediaStream Track Processor Generator API uh, and its exposure to main thread. And yeah. so the API proposal being streams-based addresses the latter part more. And it's also, we feel, a more uh, an API that's more idiomatic to JavaScript and a more natural API that solves some issues that that proposal had. Yeah, if I could try to answer your question, Tim, maybe in a more general way. I think implicitly in multiple working groups, we've been adopting the streams model in the belief that we can express pipelines with that. You know, and that includes pipelines uh, with a lot of sophisticated things, like for example, taking an input track and doing special effects you know, like background blur or funny hats, and then piping this through to an encoder and to a serializer and then to web, you know, something like a, a web, web a, a transport or maybe RTC data channel, you know, sending that over the wire and going through the same pipeline on a decoder side, right? So building all these APIs and also developing specs for things like RTC uh, data channel and workers to make all of this possible. Um, and yet we have all these what WG streams issues. I don't think uh, that you know raise questions about various aspects of the pipeline model. So it's it's kind of a central thing I think for us and frankly other working groups too, right? That are also kind of implicitly buying into the whole pipeline idea uh, to make sure we really understand it and what some of the limitations are and what we can do. So anyway, I think your suggestion is a good one to try to provide an overview of what the problem is, but it's uh, it's a pretty big problem um that uh is being brought up here um and you know uh because it, it also covers things like memory handling and you know garbage collection and all of this due to things like cancel uh, 
Um, anyway, so UN, do you think that I'm accurately uh, characterized the, the bigger problem? I don't think this is just about media capture transform. It's about all understanding streams and all the issues that we need to make it really workable as a pipeline model. Are you talking you and your I'm media? I'm not, I'm not hearing uh, you, but I, I can provide a, a, um, some clarification there that uh, we're not pull it, putting into question what WG streams piping as a concept for all use cases, only for real-time use cases. Uh, the difference is um, having a source. Yes. Oh, okay. I was trying to uh, answer, but you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so streams have been initially defined for uh, with some use cases in mind and with some structures like array buffers that are in mind and so on. And with video frames, which it's a different object, and with uh, real-time constraints, it's it's different con constraints. And uh, we, we need, if we really want to have a good uh, media pipeline based on streams to uh, identify the issues that are specific to that and how we can fix them. And uh, Additional to, to that, as you mentioned, Bernard, that's the, the long-term goal of having not just the video pipeline, but a full WebRTC-like pipeline, and uh, whether that will work out or, or not. And um, we, we're trying to look at these issues, and uh, but we have a particular focus on uh, video frame and uh, media capture transform. Still. Yeah. So anyway, I think between now and this October meeting, it might also be good for people to post demos to the list, uh, you know, uh, touching on some of the issues that are here. I think um, I know uh, Harold mentioned uh, that some people have done some fairly extensive things. I've only managed in some of the demos we've seen, Yaniv, are, you know, a couple of things strung together in a pipeline. Uh, but, you know, the more the, the more the merrier, I think, to understand the whole thing and, um, you know, some of the limitations here. So that also might help, you know, if there's code out there that people can look at and understand to what extent some of these things uh, can be handled or not handled. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, everyone feel free to look at the slides ahead of time and uh, maybe we can open the GitHub yeah. issue to discuss yeah. them. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is I think it's very important for us to get a handle on this prior to TPAC because, and that which is why we're trying to schedule a virtual interim before that, because remember, um, we have our work, web agency working group meeting, which was to kind of present an overview. So understanding the overview, I think would be important before presenting it. But the other thing is we have two hours with the media working group. Um, and some of these issues may make sense to bring up with them. Um, because they've kind of, they, they haven't been thinking about streams. Um, but if the whole point of what they're doing is to eventually you know, supply encode and decode and other st services for streaming, then I think, um, you know, they, if we find something, we need to share it with them as well. Uh. Yeah, and I, I would I would go with uh, your idea of uh, doing the homework even before the next interim. Like, if you can look at the slides and if you have right, uh, right. questions, uh, please send them to either Yoniva or I or work, we would see working chairs as well so that we can yeah. improve uh, the slides or improve the, the understanding. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I think we've got a, a ton of work to do over the next couple of weeks. Um, and in particular, I'd also mention, I know Dom has um, made a request, you know, the TPAC folks are asking for demos. Um, so some of the things we're talking about here might be very appropriate for TPAC demos as well. Uh, anyway, I think we're out of time. And I want to thank everybody. Uh, for uh, participating in the meeting, and hopefully we'll have another very good one uh, in, in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.